Welcome back to Eurobike for some of the latest and greatest tech. And this is a lightweight and aero special. That's right. Before we start, can we just say, never in our wildest dreams did we think that we'd get a car branded up with our nicknames on it. Unbelievable. Fist bump. Over on the GCN Tech Show a few weeks back, we told you that we'd spotted a new Ridley aero bike being used at the Tour de Suisse. And here it is, it's the new Noah Fast. And Ridley have clearly been busy because there is an awful lot of new tech going on here. And in that show, we suggested that maybe there was just a rim brake version because that's what the team are using. But oh no, check it out, there's a disc as well. They say that it's 6% more aerodynamic than its predecessor. Now, part of that is through complete integration of cables. In fact, you can have quite an interesting game here of spot to the cable because there's not very much on show, but that integrated bar and stem there is a work of art. Then they've also changed the fork. So gone is that split fork design that characterized the original Ridley. They say that because wheels have improved, they can actually lose that and maintain the aerodynamics. And then also the other thing I like up here is this little dimple in the head tube, which they say improves aerodynamics at increased yaw angles. So it actually causes turbulence on purpose, which then actually improves airflow over the rest of the bike. Kind of cool, nice touch. Uh, now, further back, what have we got? We've got increased compliance, so the seat post is really narrow, and they say that that has improved the comfort of the bike and also shed weight, so it's 250 grams lighter. But then, importantly, seemingly with this new generation of aero bikes, is usability. So they say that there's now continuous cable routing internally, so this one's mechanical, you'll notice, and you can literally just pop the cable in at the top and out it comes at the bottom, and split spacers so even though the cables run internally the fact that the uh, the spacers on the steerer tube there can be split meaning that you can actually higher or lower your stem without having to undo all your cables which sounds like a win in my book that's a water bottle cage like a 3.9 gram water bottle cage check it out it's called the shadow r and absolutely bonkers i've just never seen anything like it we're going to begin with the fork so this something that Sipo is calling a side fork because instead of coming down like a traditional fork it's coming horizontally so it can actually control the airflow over the tyre and make the tyre more aero but also it can guide the air all the way along the length of the bike by having this sort of boom along here also you have this triple clamp design of the fork and by also removing the seat post as well you've also reduce drag. Now how about this for some lightweight tech? I've just bumped into the people at Hunt and they've shown me this, which is the front wheel of their new hill climb wheel set. And for the pair, it's 991 grams. Now it's tubular specific, as you can see. The rim weighs just 280 grams. Each spoke is super, super light, 3.5 grams per spoke, I'm told. But although they're called the hill climb wheel set, currently the pre-production samples are being tested in road races and apparently they are solid wheels. So here we go, pre-production samples, look for them shipping soon. You'll be familiar with Vision wheels because we use them here on GCN all the time and the Metron range have just seen a big update because they've all gone tubeless ready. So what they've done in order to do that is actually change the hook on the rim itself. You can see, in fact, they've kindly put it as a decal. And so that means that they are now tubeless compatible, which is, which is great news, really, isn't it? Because tubeless is taking off. DT Swiss has got some particularly tasty new lightweight wheels in the form of their new Mon Chasserelle 35 clinchers. The wheels feature a fully carbon rim that's tubeless ready with an 18 millimeter internal rim width. So that's great for wider tires, but the my favourite feature of them is this really bling carbon uh, body on the hub and also the fact that you can see no spoke nipples. Now this is deliberate, it's an aerodynamic feature because DT has actually measured the rotational drag of its wheels and found that by putting the spoke nipples internally you can actually reduce something in the region of about half a watt of aero drag. The wheels are coming in at 1400 grams a pair which is really competitive for a set of carbon clinchers that are tubeless ready and they're only available in a rim brake version. Now this is a bike that I was really interested to come and see. It's a 3T Strada Due, okay? So it is the evolution of the 3T Strada, which 
I was pretty excited about when it was launched last year because you could not run it with a front derailleur. It had to be used one by, which on a road bike was pretty revolutionary, it's fair to say, and it caused quite the controversy. Now though, we have a two by version. But interestingly, 3T say that there was always the intention to launch a two by model as well. So the original carbon mold actually had the mounting points for that in there. But what they've done with this is to beef up the carbon layup, adding about 35 grams to it. Now, my other question to them was how much of an aerodynamic penalty is there running two by as opposed to one by? And they've said eight watts which is pretty significant, I think, when you're on an aero bike. But there we go. 35 gram penalty, eight watt penalty, but you get a front derailleur. He pays you money, he makes your choice. Well, from a one by bike that's gone two by to a two by bike that's being run one by. This is the brand new Argon 18 Nitrogen Disc SE. So they've taken their existing aerodynamic bike and changed it and added disc brakes. And they say that the first, the rim brake edition was perhaps a little bit nervous and so by adding discs they've turned that bike into an absolute shredder. Now they have had to make some changes of course to accommodate the disc brakes but the fundamental aerodynamics are the same. The fork has been stiffened by 82% and they say also the chain stays have been lengthened. It's made the bike much much more comfortable as well. So overall, they say the handling has changed slightly because of those chain stays, and it puts the bike much more in line with their Galleon Pro. So that's the standard kind of lightweight road racing bike. Now, one thing that I thought was really interesting is that given all the aerodynamic disc brake bikes that have been launched this year, Argon 18 have said that this bike is two watts slower than the rim brake bike, but they say that is a penalty absolutely worth paying in order to get that real shredability, which is probably not a word, but you know what I mean. So here we have the new Firecrest line and this is the 303, the 404 and the 808 and the difference from last year's wheel is that they now have updated rims and these are actually the old NSW rims so the technology has trickled down. The difference is though that they have printed graphics on instead of the impress graphics found on the NSW but you get the same sawtooth dimple pattern on the NSW rim and also the showstopper brake track. Changing the rim, Zip has actually made the new Firecrest between 45 and 75 grams lighter than the previous Firecrest. Where have you been, Simon? Looking for you. Sorry, Ollie, I'm looking for a Eurobike Essential, and I know Park aha, wouldn't let me down. The bottle opener. We need this after a hard day. Let's go put it to good use right now. So, to see more Eurobike content, then subscribe to the GCN channel and also the GCN Tech channel because we're going to be putting out loads of content over the next few days. And also, don't forget to click the little bell so you get a notification when we put a new video out because there's absolutely loads of awesome stuff here that we just can't wait to show you and we haven't had a chance to show you in just one video. No, that's right. Now, if you missed yesterday's video, then why not click on screen now and you will get through to that, the hottest new road bike tech. Right then. Just Wait. one thing though, I think we should take this pizza cutter as well. I think we can make good use of that. Does it cut sausage? Yeah, it'll cut sausage, yeah. Alright, let's do it.